answer this. What did Rick Ross see in you to sign you to MMG? Talent. He saw, you know, a dope MC. He saw a dope artist. But it was so different, though, <laughs> it than was. what you see at MMG. Right, it was. But from I, I can't speak for him. That's a question that, you know, he. I guess he has to answer. You never uh, asked him? No. From when, when I first met him, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, what from what he told me was, like, you know, at that time... DD 172 was going on. We were doing a lot of uh, content. A lot of the content was being on MTV jams mm -hmm. and MTV, um, just regular MTV as well. And um, he saw the video with me and Currency, mm -hmm. the address video. We shot that out in Jamaica. And he said, he was like, yo, I saw Currency before. He was like, but then when you came on rapping, he was like, I, I was like, who this dude? He was like, you had your head up and you was rapping. He's like, and I'm listening. He was like, I'm like, yo, this dude's spitting. You know what I mean? And then that's what kind of piqued his interest in like, you know, finding out who I was. And he, you know, I guess he started following me and kind of paying attention to what I was doing. And at that time, I was doing everything independent. I was, then I was on tour overseas. Then I was going to, I was in China doing shows. Um, I was all over the country, like the domestically all over the country doing shows. So this was all independent and he was seeing all of this, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Just off of social media. And um, that's what made him, you know. How did he, that call happen? Like what happened? Like, he reached out to Currency mm -hmm. and uh, Currency uh, called me and was like, yo, Ross wanted to get a hold of you or whatever. And then I was like, he was like, I just was calling. I was, I was just asking to see if it's okay to give him your number. And then I was like, I don't know what he want, but I mean, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? And then Curtis was like, yeah, I don't know. He was like, he just asked me, so I'm asking you before I give your number out. And I was like, well, I appreciate that. But I was like, yeah, you could give him, you know, my number. And then Ross called me. And then um, I think he, like, probably two days later, I was down, I went to, um, he was on the I Am Music tour with Lil Wayne. They mm -hmm. was on tour together, and I went down to Dallas and met him down there. And um, we chopped it up, and he, you know, I, I went on the tour bus with him, and he was just like, bro, he was just, he told me that story I was telling you, just like how he found out about me, and that he was, you know, vibing with me and listening to me and all that. And he was like, yo, I want to sign you to MMG. What's going through your mind? First of all, before that. Shout out to Currency for being a real nigga. Yeah, yeah. Because some niggas that I'm like, yo, you sure you don't want to holler at me, bro? Like, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but no, shout out to Currency for being nah, a real nigga. No, shout out to so, Currency. So on that, what's going through your mind on that tour bus when he like, y'all want to sign you? Man, I was kind of like, I don't even know, bro. Like, I'm just, you know, all kind of emotions, but it was just dope to kind of like, to see that all the hard work and all the, you know, just all the hard work that I put in was like actually being like, recognize you know what i'm saying whether it would have happened or not or i would have ended up being with mmg or not i mean i was but it was just a blessing bro like for real like it was a blessing to like have somebody actually reach out and be interested in stally mm. you know what i'm saying like you're dope mm. yo so how was Cause that again time? i spent all those years from like i said before meeting the most deaf in the store to that point, it was mm. like a lot that went into it. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, like, even when I was with MMG, I think some people, again, commercial, right? A lot of people didn't know the grind and the grit and, that I went through to get to that point. They thought, like, Ross just found me and was like, well, here's Stally, y'all. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? No, like, I put in blood, sweat, and tears. I put in a lot of work. I put up a lot of... Uh, my money, my, you know, I had a lot of, you know, I had manager at the time who invested in me, you know what I mean? Made sure that I, I got things and got places I needed to be. Like, it was a lot that we sacrificed, you know what I'm saying? So it was well earned. And um, I just appreciate Ross for even, like, acknowledging seeing that. Yo, you touched on something that probably a lot of people, a lot of fans and supporters probably wouldn't even understand. Yo, how was that moment when, you know, like, you on his high you on this mountaintop almost, and like you come into a situation and people judging you like, who is this nigga? <laughs> like, how, did that hurt your confidence? Like, how was that for you mentally? It never hurted my confidence. It, you know, it was something new though, mm. right? You know, I, I won't lie because I'm somebody again who I'm all over New York City. New York, it's the mecca. This is hip hop. Like, it's the birth of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going everywhere. I'm going overseas. Like I said, I'm in Beijing. I'm, like, everywhere, and I'm getting love. People are loving the music. I'm selling out shows, everything. And then, so, to kind of 
receive those snarky comments or people be like, who this, why this nigga, who, the, you know, of course you're going to be like, what? Like, who are you? Like, because anybody can say anything on the internet, you know what I mean? But did it bother me? Nah. Mm. It didn't shift nothing. It didn't make me change who I was. It didn't make me become a different artist. Like, I was always me through the process because I believed in myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That Being me and believing in myself and, and um, being the artist that I am is what got Ross to call me anyway. So wait, though, because at this time... The poster boys for MMG, and maybe not let me not say that because that might not sound as appealing, but <laughs> MMG right. was Rick Ross, Meek Mill, Wale. Mm-hmm. And I feel like... Stale. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, wait, were, was that the same time you came after, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, cool, I'm, cool, I'm, cool. I'm, so, just, I'm just... No, that's cool, I'm just cool. Ready. So we got Meek Mill, Rick Ross, Wale. Mm-hmm. And even in a moment... In, I would love to have a conversation with Wale about this. But I feel like we saw, for a moment, for a quick moment, Wale even tried to, like, start making more of... Because we talk about MC and rapper, right? Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. we see, like, flashy music. Mm-hmm. I feel like it was a moment where Wale tried to make those rap. And they were good, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it wasn't Wale. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, did you fall into that, that, that hole of trying to make flashy rap being more of a rapper than an MC who you truly were? Nah, I mean, you can listen to my catalog... Before mm. and after, or before, during, and after. And you never felt no pressure to make different music at all? I mean, I guess doing it and feeling it is two different things. So maybe there was some pressure to do it because you it doesn't even come from... It comes from a label because it's a music business, right? Mm-hmm. So when you're in the music business, you're going to have people that want to... Um, they're going to want you to do things that's good for their business. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's that's what happens when you sign to a label or you sign to a, you got to get with their business and you got to help their business. So, of course, you know, there might have been whispers or there might have been even if they didn't want to, you know, what I mean, they might have been like, hey, you should rap over this beat. You know, you should talk about this. You know, it might have been a but it wasn't like nigga do this. OK. Or you, you out of here. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like that. It was just. I feel like, but it's funny that you said that. Like they were suggesting mm-hmm. because even that it was proven that artists being themselves was the win. Because I think outside of uh, Ross, Meek Mill was the only one that went diamond. We could do fact check that was M- M- MMG, and it was off of like a song with like a Jeremiah or something like that. Like mm. it was a love song. Like he was the only one really? that really had a lot of yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like Meek, off of no. Nah, Wale. Oh, yeah, Wale. Yeah, Wale. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. you would think at the time, because Meek was out of here, like, you would thought you would thought of Meek. It was Wale. Yeah, but Wale been Wale. Right? Even before the MMG situation. I'm from Baltimore, so you can't. Yeah, like, that's what Yeah, I'm so right? I would say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say yeah. I like, mean, the, I think the world would say yeah. Because the mixtape Wale about was, nothing. Uh, Wale was like, I mean... How, I mean, the mix he about was, nothing. He was, was very crazy. successful. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm just saying, saying. He, was very, he was very. He, he had me. records on the radio and had, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. He, that was before um, MMG. Yeah. So, but we can't ignore the spotlight that it put on you because during that time, right, mm-hmm. you were nominated for best mixtape uh, BET Awards, right? Yes, yeah. So you can't ignore no, no. what it does for right. you. So what happened? And what what goes left? Why why I say? I'd rather go my separate ways. Create, I mean, it's just a feeling you get. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've been talking for a while, man. I feel like you my friend now. Yeah, yeah. Talk to what? what happened, nigga? Right, like, what right, was right. wrong? I mean, it's just a feeling you get. Like, just, I told you all of the things that I went through, right? Mm-hmm. Before meeting Most Deaf, after meeting Most Deaf, before meeting Dame, meeting Dame, before meeting Ross, meeting Ross. So I've always just had a, um, an uh, indie spirit. I've always had a spirit of just doing things my way and just being creative and um, expressing myself creatively. Mm-hmm. And when I feel like anything hinders that, then I'm going to remove myself from that. You know, my mom used to tell me, like, growing up playing sports or playing basketball or being in a relationship or whatever, it's like when you fall out of love with something, it's time to move. Or if something starts to um, kind of, like, make you feel a certain way about something, you got to kind of readjust to find that that passion and that love again. 
if that makes sense. And when if I ever feel anything that's stepping in the way of that, then I have to, I got to take a couple steps back. Can, and and that's just, you know, that's just what it was. Can I respectfully challenge the thought? Just, mm-hmm. it, you know what it sound like? Uh, they say, like, when you when you're done having fun with it, I'll be done with it. Like, when I'm done having fun with it, I'll be done with it. Mm-hmm. It sounds similar to that. Mm-hmm. And I hear people say that. I just necessarily don't agree. Because I feel like these things, we talk about marriage. Mm-hmm. I'm, let's just compare it to marriage. Marriage can be very challenging. Mm-hmm. But when you put in the work, you understand right. the value of it. Mm-hmm. Working out all of these things. So it might be a time period mm-hmm. where I'm not having fun with it. Right. <clears throat> but I get nothing from quitting, from leaving. Yeah. So I shouldn't say that I was ever not having fun with it. I should say that if I am trying to express myself creatively and I don't feel like someone is pushing that or believing in it, mm. I don't want to be a partner with you. Okay. Again, though, <laughs> you had your higher success. Nominated mixtape BT Awards. And just like I asked you about Dane, what's worth it? Like, can can we swallow our pride for a second? Mm-hmm. to make something work for the benefit of the future. We can't when it's jeopardizing your beliefs and your morals. What is your belief in morals, though? What is that It's on a grand not, scheme of things? Well, if, I'm, if I don't want to make a certain... If I don't want to be... If my image is my image, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be perceived as a flashy street. I don't want to even put myself in those situations then why am I? Mm. Some would say... Because then you're not... Who you are. Exactly. Why would I lose myself for the fame and attention or for the popularity or to get a hit record or whatever the case may be? I'm speaking in that language. Why be... If it doesn't feel good, I'm not going to do it. This conversation And if you me. don't believe, I'm not going to do I'm not here to make you believe. No, nah, I get it. It reminds me of the conversation that <laughs> uh, Steve Harvey had with, uh, with um, Monique. Mm. Y'all remember that conversation? Yes. It reminds me of that. And it's like, whose side do you... Like, because you can... Like, whose side do Because I understand, Steve. It's like, I got to feed my family. Mm-hmm. Monique, like, that ain't me. Mm-hmm. Fuck what you talking about. <laughs> yeah. But it's like I understand both sides. Mm-hmm. So it's like, so okay. And some people will do things to to feed their family. But let me say, let me like, if I if you come to me and you like, I got this great idea for a podcast, and I got somebody that wants to invest in the podcast but you have to sign off for it and then I say no how would that make you feel if it's going to be life changing so again we boy if if was a a fifth we all be drunk <laughs> right i ain't been in this situation so I, it's easy for a nigga to be like yeah man that's my brother i take a bullet for that nigga the gun you looking at a gun yeah what you going to do now mm-hmm. so it's easy to say what if I know it probably would hurt my feelings, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm asking straight from the source because you've been in. And I'll just be wondering, like, looking back on it. I know we always say we don't have no regrets. But I wonder if we could change as a man. Mm-hmm. Like, if it's somebody that's going through something that, like, if it's something you could change, would you look back and be like, you know what? I might have could have budged a little bit. Nah. Shit, that's fair. Yeah. I budged a little bit. Mm. Mm. I was there. Damn. <laughs> that's real, though. That's real, bro. I, yeah, I think that's real. I think what happened is we talk about, again, we talk with this conversation, we talk about the industry a lot. It's easy to look at things on the screen. Again, because I'm interviewing you. I do my research, mm-hmm. but I'm still a spectator. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. It's so easy to look at somebody and be like, that look good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would. Mm-hmm. Like, you have no idea. Mm-hmm. Like, you have no idea. Like, <laughs> So, like, no, nah, I get it. And I yeah. can only just take the answer. Like, I get it. Now that's crazy. Okay. Everything that's, that glitters ain't gold. 
That's real. That's real. <laughs> Man. Literally and figuratively. That's a fact. They got some moistenite diamonds <laughs> yeah, 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 right yeah. now. Yeah. That should look pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a moist. <laughs> it was like, I'm about to second thought. It was like, ah, oh, I'm good. <laughs> nah, not right now, but uh, you could have got me. But, 